What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 5 of my favorite phones you can use with Cricut in 2022. Now before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and if you want to learn more about any of these phones individually, I will be linking to several other videos about them in the description, as well as some information about pricing and availability. But with that being said, let's get into it. So up first, we got the Cricut Icon 3. This is really a classic, affordable Android phone. No real exceptional features here, but for what it is, it is a pretty decent device. And the best part about it is it's really affordable. In fact, as of the recording of this video, I believe Cricut does have a deal where you can get it for free. So in general, if you're looking for a more basic phone that you don't really want to spend a whole lot of money on, the Cricut Icon 3 is definitely a great option. So with this phone, we're getting a 6.5 inch LCD display with a 720p resolution, a PPI of 268, and an aspect ratio of 20 by 9. So again, really nothing amazing here, but at 6.5 inches, the display is decently large, so if you're doing something like watching videos for example, for a really entry level phone, you will get a pretty good experience here. And with the 20 by 9 aspect ratio, we are getting a taller and more narrow form factor, and this is going to give you a more immersive experience in landscape mode, and if you're doing something like scrolling through social media for example, you can fit more content on the screen without having to scroll as much. The Cricut Icon 3 is getting 32GB of internal storage with microSD card expansion, which granted is not really great, but again considering that this is a really entry level phone that a lot of people are actually going to end up getting for free, it's not really that bad, especially if you're more of a light user and you're really only keeping a few apps on your phone. Because remember, this phone does have microSD card expansion, so if you have a lot of photos and videos for example, you can always offload those onto a microSD card anyway. But that being said, of course, if you're more of a power user and you have a lot of apps and stuff like that, in that case, a microSD card is really only going to help so much, so if you are in that situation where you're going to need more internal storage, definitely keep this in mind. Now for security features, this phone does not have face unlock, but we do at least get a fingerprint scanner here on the back, so that's definitely a nice thing to have, but let's go ahead and give it a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, the fingerprint scanner does work pretty well. Now taking a look at the camera setup here, we got a water drop notch here for the front facing camera. This camera is 5 megapixels. And then on the back, we got a single camera, and this camera is 8 megapixels. And for video, this phone has a max recording quality of 1080p in both the front and back, which honestly, considering how low end this phone really is, is actually kind of impressive because a lot of phones in this price range can only record in 720p. So while the photo and video quality with this phone is honestly not great, if you're just using the camera for something like Snapchat for example, where the quality isn't super important, it will at least get the job done. But that being said, if you are taking a lot of photos for social media, for example, that you really want to keep for something, then in general, this is definitely not going to be a great phone for you. Because while the camera does at least work, first of all, as you can see, it really has pretty much no features here. And in addition to this, compared to pretty much all the other phones in this video, the photos you're going to get with this phone are really not the best. So if you're not really using the camera a whole lot, and you're not taking pictures you really want to keep and use for stuff, then it will at least be okay. But again, if you are taking a lot of pictures, then you're definitely going to want a different phone with a better camera. Now as far as RAM and processor go, the Cricut Icon 3 is getting 3GB of RAM with the MediaTek Helio A20 processor. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on it, and it came back with a single core score of 148 and a multi-core score of 510. So as you probably could have guessed, it's not really the fastest phone out there, and it's really only made for basic activities. So if you're doing stuff like browsing the web, using social media, streaming content like videos and music, and you're really just not going to be on your phone a whole lot, then it will get the job done. But if you're more of a heavy user, if you're doing stuff like mobile gaming, or if you are going to be on your phone a lot, you will notice this is really not the fastest phone out there. So if performance is important to you, then the Cricut Icon 3 is probably not going to be the best choice. But in my experience, while the phone definitely is not very fast, I personally haven't had any performance issues, and everything has run decently smoothly, so if you are doing more basic activities, then it will at least get the job done. Now for the battery, the Cricut Icon 3 has a 3500mAh battery, so not the biggest battery out there. Again, this phone is really just meant for light use. If you're just using your phone for basic activities like sending text messages, making calls, occasional web browsing and social media use and stuff like that, it will still get the job done. And if you're not really going to be on it a whole lot, it will at least last throughout the day. But if you are on your phone a lot, the battery life on this phone, while normally being at least acceptable is probably not going to be the best for heavy use. Another thing to keep in mind here is that this phone does not have NFC, so if you like to make contactless mobile payments using tap and pay, keep in mind you're not going to be able to do that with this phone. So overall, at the end of the day, the Cricut Icon 3 is really among the most entry level phones the carrier offers, but of course if you really need something for the absolute basics and you don't really want to spend a lot of money on it, as long as you're not going into it expecting amazing performance and features, the Cricut Icon 3 will at least get the job done.
Coming up next, we got the TCL30Z. Now this is another one of the really affordable entry level phones, and in a lot of ways, it's almost interchangeable with the Cricut Icon 3. But I personally like the display quality a little bit better, I found that it runs a little bit more smoothly, and in general, it's just a little bit more pleasant to use. But despite the more subtle differences, just like with the Cricut Icon 3, if you're looking for something really affordable, and you don't really need amazing performance or fancy features, the TCL30Z is going to be another great option. Now with this phone, we're getting a 6.1 inch IPS LCD display. With a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 282, and an aspect ratio of 19.5 by 9. So with this phone, the size and dimensions aren't quite as good as the Cricut Icon 3, but in this day and age, I want to say the average smartphone is around 6.5 inches, something like that. And while that is good for content consumption, not everyone really wants a huge phone. And with this phone, it's definitely a little bit more compact. So if you want something a little bit more comfortable to carry around and maybe use with one hand, for example, then this could be a good thing. Another cool thing about this display is that despite just being a 720p display, the image still does look really good, and considering that TCL is originally a TV company, and they essentially put the same technology into their displays, you're really going to get a high quality image here. So while of course it's not the most amazing display out there compared to something like the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G for example, for being a really entry level affordable phone, it definitely does get the job done. Now for storage with this phone, we're getting 32GB of internal storage with microSD card expansion, so again not really great, but of course keep in mind, these phones are really meant for more basic use, so if you are more of a power user, and you have a lot of apps and stuff like that, then this already is definitely not going to be the phone for you. But that being said, if you are just using your phone for more basic activities, and you really only have a few apps here and there, but say you have a lot of photos and videos for example, since this phone does at least have microSD card expansion, you can always offload your photos and videos onto a microSD card. Now for security features, unfortunately the TCL30Z does not have a fingerprint scanner, but we do at least get face unlock with this phone, so it's definitely nice to have at least another option besides a pin to get into it. Now for the camera setup here, we got a water drop notch for the front facing camera, this camera camera is 5 megapixels, and on the back we got a single 8 megapixel rear camera, so just like the Cricut Icon 3, a really featureless camera setup here, and the photo quality as you would expect from a phone in this price range really isn't the best, so if you are taking a lot of photos for something like social media for example, you're most likely going to want a phone with a better camera, but if you're not really taking photos you want to keep, maybe you're just using Snapchat or something like that, in that case this phone will at least get the job done. Now as far as RAM and processor go, with this phone we're getting 3 gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Helio A22 processor. On Geekbench 5 we're getting a single core score of 166 and a multi-core score of 575, so pretty typical entry level phone performance. Again, this type of phone is really more meant for basic activities, like browsing the web, using social media, sending text messages, making calls, stuff like that. So if you're doing stuff like mobile gaming, while certain things will work, you're probably not going to get the best experience, so if you're really going to be using your phone a lot, I would recommend getting a device with a faster processor, but again, for more basic activities, if you're really just more of a light user, then it will at least get the job done. Now the TCL30Z has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, so not the biggest battery out there, but one interesting thing about this phone is the battery is actually removable. So if you pop this tab right here, the entire back will come off. And as you can see here, not only do we have the battery, but we also got the slot for the SIM card and the micro SD card, so definitely an interesting design here, and today in 2022, it's not really all that common anymore. Now the potential benefit of having a removable battery is that if you're in a situation where you know you're going to be out for a while, and you're not going to be able to charge your phone a whole lot, you could always get a second battery, and that way when this one dies, because remember, with a 3000 milliamp hour battery, the battery life is really not going to be great, you can simply replace it instead of having to charge it again. Now would I personally really like that? No, in my opinion, it does sound pretty inconvenient, but all the same, with a phone in this price range, you do get what you pay for, and again, this phone really isn't meant for heavy use like that. But that being said, having a removable battery is definitely an interesting workaround if you ever do find yourself in a situation where you need more battery life. Now as far as NFC goes with this phone, this phone does not have NFC either, so again, if you like to use tap and pay, you're not going to be able to do that with this phone. Up next, we got the Cricut Dream 5G. Now with this phone, this is really one of those situations where I feel like you really get a lot more than you pay for, because despite being a really affordable device, the Cricut Dream 5G has a lot of really impressive qualities you don't typically find in a phone like this. So with this phone, we're getting a 6.82 inch LCD display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 263, and an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by nine. So the best thing about this phone's display is of course, it's really large. At 6.82 inches, it's not only large for an entry level phone, but I would say it's larger than the majority of smartphones period. So if you are consuming a lot of content and you want a phone with a larger display, the Cricut Dream 5G is gonna be a great choice. In addition to this, with an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by nine, the Cricut Dream 5G has an abnormally tall and narrow form factor, and this is going to give you a nice experience in landscape mode of course, and a better scrolling experience as well.
well. Now for storage, the Cricut Dream 5G has 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So unlike a lot of the lower end phones that only have 32 gigabytes, we're actually getting a decent amount of storage here. Now, is it really ideal? No, I personally don't think so. Not exactly. I personally think 128 gigabytes is the ideal amount of storage. But again, compared to only 32 gigabytes, with 64, you are getting a lot more space to work with. And again, there is micro SD card expansion here, and that's going to be great for stuff like photos and videos. For security features, this phone does not have face unlock, but we do get a fingerprint scanner right here on the back. So let's give it a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, the fingerprint scanner was real fast and responsive, no issues at all. Now for the camera setup, we got a water drop notch for the front facing camera. This camera is 13 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide camera, a two megapixel macro camera, and a two megapixel depth sensing camera. So as far as features go, despite being a really entry level phone, this phone has pretty much all the features, including a macro camera and an ultra wide camera. And in addition to this, the actual photo quality itself, while still not being what I would consider are great is still pretty decent so if you're taking photos for social media and stuff like that that you actually want to keep for something while it's still not going to be the best out there it definitely will get the job done and you can get some real nice photos with this phone now for video quality this phone does have a max recording quality of 1080p in both the rear and front cameras and as far as the actual image and audio quality go they're not really the best but for something like snapchat where the quality isn't super important it will at least get the job done but if you're doing something more serious like vlogging or youtube for example then i would choose a higher end device that can record better videos. Now for RAM and processor, this is probably the strongest point of this phone, especially considering its price range. So with the Cricut Dream 5G, we're getting 4GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. On Geekbench 5, we're getting a single core score of 545 and a multi-core score of 1666. So in general, for being a really entry-level phone, the Cricut Dream 5G really does have great performance. Sure, it's not going to be anywhere near the level of a flagship phone, for example, but it's definitely at mid-range level at least, and I still wouldn't even call this a mid-range phone. It's still very much an entry-level phone, MSRPing for around $190, and as of the recording of this video, I believe Cricut is offering it for free. So in general, considering how inexpensive this phone is, the performance is really great. So if you're looking for a more inexpensive entry-level phone, but you still want really good performance, maybe you're doing something like gaming, or you just know you're going to be on your phone a lot, for the money, the Cricut Dream 5G is going to be a great choice. And of course, as the name suggests, this phone does have 5G connectivity, making it one of the most affordable 5G phones you can currently get. Now, as far as the battery goes, the Cricut Dream 5G has a 4,750 mAh battery that supports 10 watt fast charging. And in addition to the fast charging, the Cricut Dream 5G also supports 10 watt wireless charging as well, so that's definitely a nice thing about this phone. In general, the battery on this phone is great in every way. Not only is it going to have really good battery life and longevity, but you also have a couple different options when it comes to charging the phone. And with wireless charging, say your charging port breaks, normally on a phone without wireless charging, you'd either have to fix the charging port or replace the phone. And when you're talking about this price range, it's probably not even worth it to fix. So you would basically just have to throw it away and get a new phone. But with wireless charging, if something does happen to your charging port, you can still charge it with a wireless charger. So theoretically, you would be able to keep the phone for a little bit longer without having to replace it. But in general, no matter how you look at it, the Cricut Dream 5G does have a great battery. As far as NFC goes, this phone actually does have NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, you actually will be able to do that with this phone. So overall, while the Cricut Dream 5G is obviously not really the most premium phone out there, it does have some great features, really good performance, a good battery, and a decent camera setup. And in general, this phone does provide quite a bit of value for the money. Up next, we got the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2021. Now, I do think the 2022 version is also on Cricut now, but since it has been out for a while, the 2021 model is so much less expensive than it used to be, and honestly, for what it offers compared to its current price, I feel like the Moto G Stylus 5G 2021 is a better value. Now, with this phone, we're getting a 6.8 inch IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 386, and an aspect ratio of 20 by 9. So honestly, I really have no complaints about this display. We got a 1080p resolution it's really large and everything looks really good too so if you're doing stuff like watching videos playing games looking up photos or even just reading this phone is going to be great for all of it for storage this phone's getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro sd card expansion so this is definitely a great amount of storage and while there are going to be some people out there who have tons of apps who are probably still going to fill this up for most people 128 gigabytes is really all you're going to need and in addition to having 128 gigabytes we're also getting micro sd card expansion here so of course that's going to be great for offloading stuff like like photos and videos. For security features, this phone does have face unlock as well as a fingerprint scanner on the back, so it's nice that we're getting two different ways to get into it. But let's give the fingerprint scanner a try. 
There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive. And again, it's definitely nice that we have face unlock too. So if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now taking a look at the camera setup here, we got a nice looking hole punch design for the front facing camera. This camera is 16 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 5 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. For video, this phone can record in up to 1080p in both the rear and front cameras, so unfortunately no 4K here, and honestly the video quality, just like with the Cricut Dream 5G, is going to be decently acceptable for less important videos, like social media stuff for example, Snapchat in particular, or maybe TikTok depending on your standards. But again, if you're doing something like vlogging or YouTube, where you really want professional looking videos, this is probably still not going to be the best option. Now as far as the camera features go, this phone has pretty much everything here, including an ultra wide camera and a macro camera, so this is going to be great if you're taking a lot of photos, and the quality is really good as well. So in general, if you're taking a lot of photos, and you want to make sure your phone has a good camera, the Moto G Stylus 5G 2021 is going to be a great option. As far as RAM and processor go, with this phone we're getting 4GB of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 480 5G processor. On Geekbench 5, we're getting a single core score of 502 and a multi-core score of 1662, so definitely not bad here. Sure, it's not going to be anywhere near the level of a flagship phone, and if you're doing higher performance activities like playing Fortnite for example, it's probably not going to be the best choice for that, but for more basic activities like web browsing, social media, streaming content like videos and music, and playing some of the more basic games, the Moto G Stylus 5G will absolutely get the job done. For the battery, the Moto G Stylus 5G has a 5000 mAh battery, this supports 10 watt fast charging, so definitely a real good battery, maybe not the best fast charging in the world, but in my experience, the charging speeds are still pretty good, and with a 5000 mAh battery, this phone is also going to get great battery life and longevity. Now unfortunately, this phone does not have NFC, so definitely keep that in mind, you're not going to be able to use tap and pay with it, but one thing it has that none of these other phones do is a stylus. Now as far as the actual quality of this stylus goes, it's not the best stylus in the world, it's decently responsive, at least enough to do stuff like handwritten notes, but probably not any actual art or anything, and it's not going to be anywhere near the level of something like a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, so definitely keep that in mind. But for more basic stuff like navigating through your home screen, or just taking notes or doodling or something like that, it will be perfectly fine for that, and seeing that it's one of the very few phones nowadays that actually has a stylus, if you want this kind of feature, the Moto G Stylus 5G is definitely going to be a pretty good option. But in general, the Moto G Stylus 5G 2021 is definitely a solid mid-range phone, maybe not really the best at any anything, but it does have a really nice display, a great battery, pretty good performance, a good camera, and again, it does have a stylus. So overall, if you're looking for a mid-range 5G phone, the Moto G Stylus 5G is definitely worth considering. And last but not least, we got the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. I feel like I've been including this phone in all these kinds of videos, but to be fair, there is a reason every carrier has it, since after all, it is one of the best mid-range phones on the market. Now with this phone, we're getting a 6.5 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 405, and an aspect ratio of 20 by 9. So this display, while not being quite as large as the Moto G Stylus 5G or the Cricut Dream 5G, is still definitely not small by any means, and the quality of the image itself is really good good as well. With a 1080p resolution, we're getting a nice crisp image here, the AMOLED display gives it real nice looking colors, good brightness, and the viewing angles are also the best out of all the phones in this video, so if you're outside in the sun for example, this phone is going to be a lot easier to see. So overall, again, despite not being the largest phone here, I do think the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G does have the best display here, just because the quality of the image is so much better. So if you're consuming a lot of content like watching videos, playing games, that kind of thing, this phone is going to be a great option. Now for storage, this phone is getting 128GB of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So again, just like the Moto G Stylus 5G, we're getting a great amount of storage here. So no matter what you're using your phone for, you're most likely not going to have to worry about running out of space on this phone. For security features, we got face unlock and a fingerprint scanner here, so definitely nice to get both options. For the fingerprint scanner, it's right here on the display. Definitely gives the phone a nice premium look. Let's give it a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive in addition to looking nice. And again, this phone does have face unlock as well, so if you want to use that instead, you always can. For the camera setup, we got a hole punch for the front facing camera. This camera is 32 megapixels. And then we got a quad camera setup on the back with a 64 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 5 megapixel macro camera, and a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera. So as far as the camera features go, this phone pretty much has it all. And I will say as far as quality goes, this phone definitely has the best in this entire video. There are some phones 
phones here, like the Moto G Stylus 5G, for example, that do take really good photos, but the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is definitely on a completely different level. So if you're taking a lot of photos and you want to make sure they're real high quality, then the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G will be a great choice. In addition to this, for video, this phone has a max quality of 4K in the rear and front cameras, making it the only phone here that can record 4K videos. And not only is the video quality itself good, but the audio quality is also pretty decent. So if you're doing something like vlogging, YouTube, or really recording any kind of video that you actually want to keep, this phone really will get the job done. And out of all the phones we've talked about so far, the A53 5G is definitely going to be the best option for that kind of stuff. Now as far as the RAM and processor go, with this phone we're getting 6GB of RAM with the Samsung Exynos 1280 processor. On Geekbench 5, we're getting a single core score of 742 and a multi-core score of 1910, so definitely great performance here. And of course, while this phone is still not going to be as fast as something like a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra for example, it still is going to get the job done in pretty much any kind of situation. Sure, if you're doing really high performance activities like playing Call of Duty or Fortnite, it is going to struggle a little bit if you max out the graphics, but it still can do most stuff. So if you're going to be on your phone a lot and you really want a phone that has great performance, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is definitely worth considering. For the battery, this phone has a 5000 mAh battery that supports 25 watt fast charging. Unfortunately, no wireless charging here. That would have been real cool though. But in general, like any phone that has a 5000 mAh battery, this phone has great battery life and longevity. And with 25 watt fast charging, the charging speeds on this phone are going to be real good as well. As far as NFC goes, this phone does have it. So if you like to use tap and pay, it will be a good choice for that. But those were five of my favorite phones you can use on Cricut's network in 2022. Now obviously these phones do have a pretty wide variety of intended purposes. If you're just looking for cheap phones that work as phones and nothing else, the Cricut Icon 3 and the TCL 30Z are going to be great choices for you. Sure they don't really have any impressive features and their performance is pretty slow, but for really basic devices that are so inexpensive they're basically disposable, both of these phones really do get the job done. If you're in a situation where you really want an entry level phone, but maybe you want 5G connectivity and a little bit better performance, and that case, the Cricut Dream 5G is going to offer quite a bit of value for the money, and in general, while a lot of people do seem to have mixed feelings about this phone, I personally do think that for the price, it does have a lot to offer. On the other hand, if you want to get something that's a little bit nicer than a typical entry-level phone, but you still don't want to go too crazy, I do think the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G is a great value, especially considering now that the Moto G Stylus 5G 2022 is out, the 2021 is going to be a lot more inexpensive. And then finally, if you want a more premium, higher performance device that's pretty much going to do it all, but you still don't want to spend 14 hundred dollars on a flagship phone, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is definitely a great alternative. Now once again, if you want to learn more about any of these phones individually, I have made a ton of videos about all of them, so I will be linking to those in the description, as well as some information about pricing and availability, because of course this is always changing. But that's it for this video, if you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram, and as always, I will see you in the next video.